Hey, what's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. And today we are finally testing the Ryzen 3600 in gaming performance and production workloads. Now, I feel like the most comparable CPU on Intel side of things uh, to compare this to is the i5-9400F. If you're currently in the market for a mainstream gaming system around the $1,000 mark or so, maybe $1,500, these two CPUs are probably the ones you should be looking at. So let's not waste any more time. Let's put them head to head and see which one gets the official recommendation. So the R5 3600 can be had for $200 US, whereas the i5 9400F currently goes for $145 or so on Amazon. So it's not a direct dollar for dollar comparison, just keep that in mind if you are on a tight budget. The main spec difference between the two is the fact that the R5 3600 has simultaneous multi-threading allowing for 12 threads over 6 cores compared to the i5's 6 threads over 6 cores. This affects production workload performance quite a lot, but its impact on gaming performance does vary. We will be looking at overclocked results for the R5 3600, although my sample seems to be an absolute lemon, only reaching 4.2 GHz on all cores at a vCore of 1.42 volts. This is compared to 4.3 GHz or so, which most people should be able to hit on the R5 3600. And for those who didn't know, the i5 9400F is the cheaper counterpart of the i5 9400. And with that $40 price cut, we are losing the integrated GPU. For most of you, those price savings will be worth it to put towards other components. In regards to testing, I was tempted to restrict the i5 9400F to just 2666 megahertz memory, seeing as that's what you'd be stuck with on a B360 motherboard. But Z390 motherboards can be had for pretty cheap these days, and at least there you have somewhat of an upgrade path. So both CPUs are tested with the same 3200 MHz CL14 memory as are all CPUs in the stack. We're using a 2080 Ti as normal for our CPU testing, and I've dropped the 1440p gaming benchmarks here to allow us to test additional titles at 1080p. This will give us a broader perspective on performance as well as make the averages at the end a bit more accurate. Okay, so starting off with the usual production workload benchmarks, we have Cinebench R20 running all threads available, and as expected, we have the Ryzen 3600 significantly ahead of the i5-9400F. In fact, the R5-3600 is virtually matching the i7-9700K in this test pretty impressive. When we restrict the rendering test to a single thread, we still actually have the R5-3600 out in front. Now, something that I do want to mention at this point is that Cinebench is not the be-all and all benchmark that it's been popularized to be. These results represent how well these CPUs will perform in Maxon's Cinema 4D software. When we look at Twitch streaming via OBS at 1080p, we can see that neither of these CPUs are superb options for streaming with these settings, but at least it is possible with the R5-3600. The i5-9400 F on the other hand does not have any additional headroom, especially in CPU intensive games like Far Cry 5 as tested here. And as always, I will note that streaming via Nvidia's NVENC is likely going to be the most practical setup for casual streaming. Blender shows a nice lead for the Ryzen CPU as well, although not as drastic as what we saw in Cinebench. Here you will save around 12% of rendering time by going with the Ryzen 3600 over the i5-9400F. Again, I have included results from a variety of GPUs as it is possible to leverage those as rendering devices as we know. Going with a GTX 1070 for example can cut the rendering time down in half. In Adobe's Premiere Pro, we're measuring how long it takes to export a 10 minute 4K video project using the YouTube 4K encoding preset. And here the Ryzen 3600 is actually the better choice. The i5-9400F cannot utilize quick sync acceleration like the 9700K and 9900K for example, as the 9400F does not have an integrated GPU to do that. Overall for video editing, the Ryzen 5 3600 is the better choice. File compression usually shows the higher threaded processors performing better, and here that's no different at all. Both compression and decompression show the Ryzen 3600 significantly faster than the i5-9400F. Also, the mild overclock up to 4.2 GHz all cores doesn't really seem to be worth it. If your 3600 can get to 4.3 GHz and above, then perhaps you'll see a worthy improvement, but at 4.2, I don't think it's personally worth it. All right, but now onto gaming, and let's start with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a very popular title, and here the R5-3600 was about 4% faster than the 9400F on average, with a much stronger lowest 1% result. 
Battlefield 5 showed the 9400F taking a slight edge on average FPS, but the R5 3600 provided a tighter spread between frame rate, shown by the higher lowest 1% results. In this instance, the R5 3600 would provide a slightly more consistent experience. Apex Legends shows us that pretty much any mainstream current gen CPU with 6 cores or more can run this game pretty well. This game does seem to favour Intel overall though, with the 9400F taking a 5% lead over the R5 3600. Now Far Cry 5 shows us some pretty interesting results. Here the i5 9400F beats the R5 3600 on average FPS by a margin of 10%, but take a look at the lowest 1% of FPS. The Intel CPU is 7% slower. As we know, the i5 9400F is a 6 core, 6 threaded CPU, whereas the r5 3600 has 12 threads. In this case, the 9400F does have the occasional stutters here and there, and although they are occasional, they are really noticeable and significant. Remember this result when we come to our conclusion in the end. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we see the largest margin yet for the R5 3600, where here on average, it's over 15% faster than the 9400F. This title doesn't really seem to like a high core count either, and here the 3600 is actually faster than the 12 core 3900X. Fortnite shows some promising results for both CPUs. The 9400F here is slightly faster in this title, but you're not going to notice margins this small, especially at these high frame rates. Both CPUs are well within reach of even the overclocked 9700K and 9900K. Again, in Warhammer Vermintide 2, we're looking at a pretty small margin of around 2%, this time in favor of the Ryzen 3600. For another perspective, the 3600 is significantly faster than its predecessor, the stock R5 2600 from last generation. World War Z running the Vulcan API has the Intel CPU out in front by a decent margin of around 10%. That's one of the larger margins that we'll see between these two CPUs. If you guys would like to see more Vulcan games tested, let me know down below. Now, most of us are familiar with Rainbow Six Siege, a very popular competitive first person shooter. This game seems to like Intel's hardware overall a bit better than AMD's. Here the i5 9400F can easily keep up with the overclocked i7 and i9 of the same generation. Stuttering isn't an issue here for the 9400F as CPU usage isn't as heavy as something like Far Cry 5. In the end, the 9400F enjoys around an 11% lead here. Next up we have Project Cars 2, a pretty CPU intensive title where the 9400F takes the lead by a little over 9%. This game loves a decent balance between clock speed and core count, as demonstrated by the R5 3600 matching the R7 2700X. In retrospect, that's seriously impressive, so a big thumbs up to AMD there. The 9400F, on the other hand, doesn't really see any significant improvement over its predecessor, the i5 8400. Finally, looking at the averages between all of the CPUs here, compared to the stock Ryzen 3600 down at 0%. So, on average, in the games tested, I found the i5 9400F to be 6.7% faster than the R5 3600. As we saw though, this is extremely game dependent. Please understand this. In some games, they are tied and in other games, either CPU can actually lead by 10% or more. We can also see that there's no real benefit to overclocking the R5 3600 to 4.2 gigahertz. Although we do get a nice little bump in production workloads, you might as well just leave the CPU at stock settings if you're just using the CPU for gaming. So definitely some pretty interesting results. When I did this comparison last year, comparing the R5 2600 to the i5-8400, I honestly was leaning more towards the Intel side of things because the margin that that had over the Ryzen CPU in terms of frame rate was a lot larger. With third gen Ryzen though, we see a massive uplift in performance to the point where it actually beats the i5 in some titles. So if you're doing a mainstream build right now, which one do you go with? Well, the easy answer first, uh, if you're doing any production workloads, just get the R5 3600. Don't even bother with the i5. I mean, any additional multi-threaded program out there aside from gaming, you should get the Ryzen CPU. You're gonna save a lot more time and be a lot more productive. For gaming performance, strictly a gaming build, you honestly could go either way, but I think the Ryzen CPU is the safer choice. Despite the i5 uh, having a 6% or 7% margin over the 3600, I do think the Ryzen CPU is the better choice because overall that uh, simultaneous multi-threading means that you're not going to run into any issues like this CPU runs into with Far Cry 5 where it is kind of unplayable when you hit those stutters and you never know if you go with this CPU, you could potentially hit those frame time stutters in games down the road. Whereas with the six cores and 12 threads on the R5 3600, you're just not going to see that. Now, by all means, if you just play one game on the benchmark suite that I tested, for example, Rainbow Six Siege, where the 9400F, I believe had a 10% uh, margin over the 3600. 
In that case, go for it. Get the 9400F. There's absolutely nothing stopping you. It's a great gaming CPU. Just keep in mind that you might run into those frame time stutters down the road. And so that pretty much closes out the recommendation. I really do think the Ryzen 5 3600 is the safer choice overall. You can find both of these CPUs linked down below if you are interested in picking one of them up. As always, guys, a huge thanks for watching. Consider subscribing down below if you haven't already. And I will see you all in the next one.